Hi, it's Michelle here from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand. And today is the first day of lockdown, our social isolation here in New Zealand. Um, but I don't like that name. It sounds too negative for me. So I am calling it hibernation, which means I can stay at home, uh, stand around, uh, spend the day sleeping if I want, keep my PJs on if I'd like, and spend the whole day crafting. So I'm looking at it in a positive light. Um, so we've got to be this way for at least four weeks. Uh, hopefully no longer than that if we can get everything under control. And I hope you're staying safe and healthy where you are. So I'm intending to do videos, try to do one video a day uh, just for my own sanity and to be able to share um, what I love to do because I can't do any in-home classes at the moment. So. With all that said, um, welcome, and uh, today um, I'm going to do a different um, spin, <laughs> pardon the pun, on this card. So this card here um, is, uh, let's get them going, come on, there you go, is a spinner card, okay? Um, some people call it a penny spinner because um, traditionally to get the card spinning, you would actually use a um, penny, um, stick it to a penny on the back, and that would give it enough weight to spin around. Um, I'm in New Zealand, so we don't have, um, oh, I showed you the wrong one. There's a penny. Um, we don't have pennies um, here in New Zealand. This is our smallest coin, which is um, a 10 cent coin, um, which is actually slightly larger than the American penny. And um, having said that, it's also 10 cents. So if you were making cards, lots of cards, that would just add a lot to the cost. So I will show you how I did it without using um, a coin. Um, so it does spin, just not as um, fast or as hard, um, heavy as um, using a penny. So this card here, I'm going to actually um, do a variation. So I'm going to um, use the little ladybug stamp set for the card I'm going to show you today. So I'll explain how this card was made in case you want to make this one. So um, with this card, it was used using the honeybee um, stamp set, which is available in the mini Stamping Up catalog. Um, and I also used the Detail B dies um, that match this set to cut out the bee. You could just um, cut it by hand, but also on the inside there's a large B, which the dies have um, an image for this large B. So um, the B and the background I colored with the um, the watercolor pencils, um, and I used the Stamparatus to get the mirror image of the flowers. Um, having done that, I realized, oh, I could have just taken it and stamped it the same direction there, but what I did is I stamped the two bottom ones with the Stamparatus, turned the paper around, stamped again. Now, hopefully you can see, um, I did gold embossing on the beehive to give it the shine, and um, you might be able to see a little bit, I've got some clouds going over. The wings um, are a bit shimmery because I used a bit of Wink of Stella on the wings for the bee. So um, the card we're going to do today will have the same shape and concept, um, but it's just going to have different images on it. The background paper here is the um, Golden Honey Specialty Designer Series paper that is only available as a free gift during Celebration. It's a level one um, free gift, and Celebration ends on March 31st. So if you like that, you'll need to get an order in um, by March 31st at whatever level um, uh, level one celebration items are for the country that you're in. Here in New Zealand, the level one is a $110 order. Um, so you could choose that paper. Um, one side is plain and the other side of the paper actually has um, gold shimmer on it. I'm going to use another level one paper for the project I'm doing today. And this paper is called... Um, it's just recently come out. It's called the Flowering Foil Specialty Designer Series Paper, which can only be um, received as a free gift. This is not double-sided. Most of our paper is, but because of the um, shininess on this, it's single-sided. So let's get started. 
So um, for making the card, doesn't matter what designs you're putting on it, you need a card base, so whatever country you're in. Um, this is half an A4 scored at 10 and a half centimeters and folded in half. And so the end pieces, um, to save on paper, I've just cut two little pieces to put on either side. And these are 10 um, centimeters by, I believe it was um, three, 10 centimeters by four centimeters. So that's approximately one and a half by four inches. Um, my original card, I cut the piece the full uh, size, and you can see a bit of the paper there, because I thought I'd be able to see the paper through um, this section, and I thought it might be cute to see all the bees in the beehive, but you don't really see it, so I thought to save on paper, I've only just cut the two strips for the two sides. So your base, your strips for either side, um, you'll need whatever stamp set you choose. Piece for the inside, if you're doing colored um, card stock, um, I use just the plain Whisper White for the inside. Um, so in your country, whatever size fits in there. Um, I do this at 10 by 14.3 um, centimeters. Gives me the same um, measurements all the way around. And then you'll need a piece of thick Whisper White because you need the thickness to hold up the center section. And this one is cut, again, it's at the 14.3 um, there, and I believe I did it this way at um, 11 centimeters. Yes, 11 centimeters. So that's about four and a quarter by uh, four inches. So that piece is about four and a quarter by four inches. That's gonna be your central piece. You'll need a scrap piece of um, thick whisper white to cut out whatever image is gonna be spinning around in the center. And of course, your inks, stamps, and um, whatever uh, else you need to stick it down, like your glues, etc. I'm going to color this one um, with the Stampin' Blends, so I need to use the Memento Black ink, because when you use um, Stampin' Blends, you have to use a water-based ink because the Stampin' Blends are alcohol-based. So um, I'm going to use the Memento Black ink. If I were um, not using the blends, using my regular markers, then I could use the Stazon ink um, to keep it from bleeding through. Okay, so hopefully I've told you everything you need for this. Um, and let's get started. So I've roughly got an idea of what I'm going to make here. Um, so as I said, I'm going to use the little ladybug stamp set, uh, the flower and the ladybug that's flying. Um, this stamp set, you could purchase, um, matching dies for it. Now this stamp set is only available to hosts, um, having parties that the sales meet the, um, minimums and it's a free gift just until the end of celebration which is uh, March 31st. Here in New Zealand that would be um, sales of $575. Um, the dies you can purchase and that helps to up your sales but um, of course you would only want to purchase dies if you've already um, qualified for the set. So I love the little ladybug so I want to give it a go and see how that spins around. All right. And for decoration, um, I thought I will try using some of the flowers for the Under My Umbrella um, stamp set. See how that goes. Okay, so that's enough explanation. <clears throat> for the center part, um, I want to put my flower on there. Now with um, my previous one, I'd already cut the circle out and then I stamped and embossed, um, heat embossed the um, beehive. So you see there's no edges sticking out there. This one, because I'm not planning to have words in the top, I'm just going to go ahead and um, stamp the flower. Um, just checking I got the right direction. Stamp the flower right in the middle and then go from there. So let's see how we get on. I love this stamp set. It just lends itself so much to coloring. And it's so, it's such a simple design, but it's so adorable. So, so adorable. 
Um, so if I've got a big stamp, I actually ink it up this way because it's easier to hold and then you don't have the chance of wobbling and getting ink everywhere else. And these that have solid parts like the the um, black dots on the ladybug and the center of the flower, I just try to make sure I get it all inked up really well. So got to keep in mind roughly where um, the circle is going to be going. And I just wanted to do it at kind of a bit of an angle here. And so I think that might be good. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention you need the layering circle dies um, for this as well. Because that's what's going to cut your circle in the middle. And I might go grab those and just check to see how my flower looks um, next to those dies. Okay, so with the layering um, circle dies, you need the largest die and the third largest die, not the second, the third, because you need to have enough of a gap for um, it to spin around, and that makes it the perfect size for um, a mini dimensional to fit inside. Before we had the mini dimensionals, when we did this, we used to snip the edges off of them. So um, when you cut it, you actually do as it says, layer it, and I'm just checking that it's going to be roughly in the center. I should have probably looked at that first. And so now some of my flower will be going over the edge, which is fine. So that's basically how I want it cut. And then um, I'll have the room for um, the ladybug to fly around the center. So that's looking pretty good to me. And um, I think I might actually go cut that now and then color it afterwards because then I'll know where to stamp everything else in relation to that. I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back. I've cut that out. And now that I've cut it out, I can see where um, I have room to stamp my other sentiments, etc. So I was thinking in this corner here, it'll be you're as cute as a bug. Oh wait, nope, actually the other way around. I was gonna say spread your wings and fly and I was thinking maybe you're as cute as a bug down there at the bottom. Um, not quite sure. Um, or I might put the flowers in there. I was going to put the hay lady there, but I put the hay lady up a bit. Kind of going up a bit, so um, not sure. I might keep off that one. So the other stamps I was thinking to use are these flower ones. And let me see what looks good. I haven't used these before, so this will be my first go at that. Now another thing too is if it's your first time using your photopolymer stamps, they tend to have a bit of a film on them, so either give them a good clean before you use them or um, rub something on them, sometimes just rubbing them with your finger or um, on, I just do it on the inside of my skin there just to get some of that um, stickiness off and it tends to turn a bit white. Um, if you don't like rubbing it on your skin, you can just simply give it a bit of a clean off on your um, chamois or whatever you'd like to use because the reason for that is if you don't then um, sometimes it doesn't stamp very well because there's still a bit of film on the photopolymer stamps um, when it comes out of um, production. So I'm just going to see how this looks. I haven't um, used these stamps yet so I just want to see just how does that look? Okay. So I'm thinking if I went there, just imagining if I had my different parts of the card stamped like that. And then I could have spread your wings and fly at the top. Yeah, that might look good, I think. Um, yeah, I'll try that. Otherwise, I'll think too long and I won't get anything done. So, we'll put that one there. And put it about there. <clears throat> and 
And then I want my spread your wings and fly up in the corner because that fits nicely um, in that direction there. Okay, nice firm pressure. There we go. All right, now, not worth, sure whether I'll put anything up there or not. I'm just wondering whether I'd put my hay lady up in the corner or not. Um, could have the hay lady there. Down at the bottom. Hmm, I'm thinking it might look better down at the bottom. I'm not sure. Don't like having to make decisions last minute on camera. Um, <laughs> Because I think you're as cute as a bug doesn't really go there. I'm just thinking that top corner might look a bit boring. Now, I'll leave it for now. If I decide I want to put some letters of uh, words up there, I can add them later on. Um, now, the other thing you need to stamp while the black is out is the ladybug. So, sorry, I'm wobbling it a bit. So the ladybug just on your um, black, and I always turn it over and just make sure I've got enough black um, ink on it. Just on a bit of scrap paper that's going to be big enough for the die cut to cut it out. And if you don't have the die cut, just enough for you to fussy cut it out. Just stamp your ladybug. Some countries call it a ladybird. Um, so got that stamped. Now I suggest if you're going to cut things out it's better to color it before you cut it out because um, you have the edges to hold on to while you color it in. Um, so to save you from having to watch me color everything I am going to um, pause the video and get everything colored but I will show you the colors um, I'm intending to use. <coughs> So the Stampin' Blends, um, for the Ladybug, I'm going to use the Real Red Stampin' Blends. Um, and I find um, I can either use the Light Basic Black or the um, Dark Smoky Slate to just give a bit of a color to the wings there. Um, and other parts are using the Light Petal Pink and the Dark Petal Pink for um, the body as well as ivory just to give it a bit of contrast and then the flower i'm planning to color them using um the flirty flamingo pens the calypso coral pens um, the flower itself will be the call me clover which is the same color as the base of the card and of course we've got to throw in some daffodil delight as well. So I will get these colored and I'll come back and show you how it looks once they're colored and finish up the card. Um, another thing I am intending to do is I'm going to color the background here between these flowers because it's just a bit too white I think um, for the card and that will give it a bit of contrast and make it match up. So I'm going to do some coloring and I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm back from all my coloring, and there's my flowers. Um, color those in. I decided to stamp the Hey Lady in the top corner. I thought that looked fine. And so I've just colored the um, green in the background of that foil paper um, to put onto this card. So let's go and get this card put together, and then we'll go move on to the center. I've been practicing doing something on the inside. Hopefully it works. But let's put the outside together. Oh yeah, and so then I did my um, my ladybird. There it is. Now another thing you're going to need, I forgot to mention, if you're not using a penny for the inside, um, you can use a half inch, um, can you see that? Half inch punch um, on a bit of scrap um, thick cardstock. Punch that out. And that you can use instead of a penny. So if you're somewhere that doesn't have a penny or a coin small enough, um, you want that for the inside. Okay, <laughs> so put those two pieces on once I find my glue. So we'll just 
and I didn't have to color right to the edge of each piece because obviously part of it's not going to be seen. And you just want to give it a nice evenness around the edges. So I used my um, liquid Tombow glue so I have a bit of wiggle room. So you just want both edges. And um, when I colored the background, I was going to do it with the blends, but the blends is only light and dark. And I didn't like um, the way the shading was coming out. So I chose to color it with the um, Stampin' Write pen instead. So this was my first attempt with the blends. And you can, I don't know if you can quite see, some of the um, greens were coming out in a different shade. And I just didn't like the way it looked. So I changed and I just used the Stampin' Write um, Call Me Clover pen. So that's the stamp and write call me clover pen and I did that to um, get the edges done. Okay, my phone just told me it's going into power saving mode so I'll try to speed this up a bit and I might have to put it on to charge. Okay, so this is going to be sitting in the center there. Um, you don't want to glue that down because you want it to have a bit of height but what you want to do is figure out where um, your center bits are going to go. So I want to glue the circle in there. So I want it to be pretty much um, centered. And the circle is going to be glued down. So once I have that figured out, pop some glue on the circle. And put that in place because that needs to be flat. So if you, um, like my original card where um, I just had words in there, if you didn't have anything on the outside edge to match up with the inner circle, you can just stick it straight down. But I want to get it to match up with that stem there. So I'm just using the square to give me an idea of where to place the circle. Okay. So as you can see, I probably could have even cut these pieces smaller they didn't need to be quite that wide because you're not going to see those little bits okay so the circle's done there now um where's my other circle to stick the pieces together we need um the stampin dimensionals um the mini ones put on your little circle that's going to be on the back of your um thing that spins now this is quite large so i could do a penny um, but the B originally wasn't that large, so a penny would have been noticeable underneath it. Um, but I'm just going to stick, actually, I think I might do <coughs> a penny. Um, because uh, that way, you can see the difference on how it goes. But I still want to do the mini um, dimensionals because it's the right <coughs> width to go through. And you actually need two of them to give you enough height um, to make it stand up. Actually, that's not the penny, is it? <laughs> that's the um, 10 cent coin. I'll go with the penny. They look so similar, but the penny is actually just slightly smaller. Uh, now I got the sticky on me. It's not going to stick. There we go. So the dimensionals, you want to make sure that they are both layered exactly the same because that's going to be just wide enough to go through. Okay. So there I got two dimensionals, mini dimensionals on my penny. Leave that for now. Okay. Your other piece, you want dimensionals on it. Um, you can do the mini, but you can also put the large. You don't want them too close to the edge because this penny will be floating along the edge like that. Hopefully you can see that. So it's going to be spinning around the edge. So you don't want anything to obscure it. So nothing too close, um, especially on those sides there. So I know I can put some bigger ones in the corners. That's fine in the corners. And this is where um, the fact that you can cut your dimensionals to size is fabulous. Um, so each corner is taken care of. 
And so I always go along the edge and cut my dimensionals, um, strips of them. Now you don't want to mix and match um, your large ones and your mini ones because they're different thicknesses. So if you use some minis here as well as the normal size ones, um, it wouldn't give you the same height. So you definitely want to stick with um, one or the other when you're using them. So I just go along when I get down to the edges and just cut um, some of the bits. And sometimes I just cut my main dimensionals in half as well. So like I could just go right up there and cut all those in half. Um, or I can carry on on the edges and just cut the edge pieces as I see fit. Okay, so with those little bits cut to better sizes, um, I am going to just give a bit of height over on these edges. I'm not going to put anything right there because, as I said, when the penny comes around, you don't want it to bump. So, um, putting a few of these just to give a bit more, <coughs> a bit more depth to um, and strength to the edges is all I'm really going to do. Just keeping in mind where um, the penny is going to go. Just using up all these little dimensionals. Excuse me. Talking too much. Alright. Now I might try to do a little strip on the edges there. I did cut little strips of this. So I just cut a teeny tiny strip just to put on there. Now you can buy strips, um, adhesive dimensional strips um, from Stamping Up. So um, if you have those, you can use those. I've done that in the past when I've created these kind of projects. Um, this time around I didn't because I need to get some more. I need to order some more because I've had classes recently that have used um, those bits up. Yeah, we'll pop one little guy in there and you don't have to put quite as many as I am, I don't think, but I want it to work well. Okay, all right. So that's there, and just to make sure the penny will not hit any of those. That one's a bit close. That one's not so bad. Okay. So we're going to stick these ones down. fun part is taking all the backs off. If you have difficulty getting the backs off, um, you just simply press in the center and it makes the edge pull up. See? That's um, with Stampin' Up! Dimensionals. Um, if you're using something else, I don't know. Some are better and some are worse. Some people use a little um, take your pick tool to poke the ends of the um, dimensionals off and pull them up with their poker little um, pin prick. Uh, my difficulty is forgetting where I start it when I take my um, backings off. So sometimes I'm not sure if I've already taken the back off something. But you can easily tell because it's sticky. So you can also see the shininess there. Okay, so now the fun part is putting it right there, lining it up and trying to get the top and the bottom pretty much even. Okay. Right there. Okay, so still got a bit of a groove in there. Alright, so the penny's gonna sit in there. And now we have to stick this top part up. Okay, and you can see the dimensional, the mini dimensional, is wide enough for that gap that I did when I did the circles. So we need some here. This one is not as crucial. Um, you still don't want them to be too close, but um, being a central part, you can just put a few 
going each direction. There we go. And another one. So that'll give me plenty of room for it to spin around the center. Okay. So just one thing, do not forget to put your penny in first because you you can squish it in afterwards if you need to, but um, it's much more difficult. So make sure you got your penny in there. And then because I stamped on this, move my penny over, I actually want it to line up with my other stamped images. So it looks like one big lovely image. There we go. That looks good. And then let's see if our penny is going to spin. Oh, tell me it's not going to spin. Come on. You know what? I think penny is actually too thick for this. Yep, I think we'll have to go back to our first plan. So I think the penny is actually too thick. So give up on our penny and go back to our original pan plan because that cardstock is thin enough that it will fit nicely. There we go. See that? That goes around nicely. So once you have that in there, pull your top off and then put your um, ladybug on wherever you'd like it to be. And keep in mind it will spin around. Okay, and there we go. So, there's our ladybug spinning around. I'm actually thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking all the time, but I'm actually thinking that having the penny on the back of the ladybug might be a good idea. Let's see if we can do that. I'm going to change what I did, take those dimensionals off. Okay, let's try this idea. Again, we want two dimensionals there. And another dimensional in the same spot on top. Let's see if we can glue a penny onto the back of this. That would make it heavier and it probably would spin better. So, if it doesn't work, I'll go back to the original idea. Not sure if the penny will stick on here. Okay, here we go. There's my one cent worth. I'm not sure if you can see that. The screen's kind of gone dark. We'll see if this works. I'll pause it and then I will plug it in. See, it spin. And then I'll carry on showing you how to do the inside. So get it up to an area you want. Make sure the penny's on there. Stick it on to the penny. Aha! That's definitely better. So, the penny is giving it enough weight so it spins around. Um, so it makes it spin better than before. Okay, now I will come back in a moment to show you how to do the inside. Okay, so I'm back and I stuck it on with the penny behind and as you can see, it spins around nicely. So that's why it's called a penny spinner. Because a penny helps it to spin. Yay! So that's the front done. So for the inside, um, I've been practicing on my paper um, to do the little ladybugs. And um, I've got the word thinking of you. So when you do the ladybugs, um, what you can do is either uh, use the Stamparatus if you want and then you can step it down or if you think um, you're good you just simply stamp it around the edges but I practiced here to determine where to start and stop um, where I stamped the ladybug and so basically you can just eyeball it stamp your little line of ladybugs stamp your other line eyeballing it oh. Sorry, didn't do it where you could see. 
try that again. So I stamped one near the edge, then I stamped my other line just um, straight on. So trying to line them up. And then the last line, if you could, you can just line it up where um, the extra one overlaps, or you could wipe the ink off of that, or you could even use um, a post-it note to um, cover up what you don't want to um, show up if you're not sure exactly where it's going to line up. So you can get the ink off or cover it up with the post-it note. And then so I've got two lines of ladybugs right now. So this last one, I only want three of them. So I'm covering up the last one and I'm lining it up best I can. Straight down, straight up. That wasn't the best I can. Um, <coughs> but see, I missed a bit of him. But uh, so that's a bit crooked. Anyway, from for the magic of video, voila! I've actually already done them. <laughs> so I went around there and then I carried on and then did it and then um, carried on. So because I practiced um, doing uh, a bunch of them here on my paper, I could determine where exactly they were going to go. And then um, I simply stamped the thinking of you in the middle. Uh, I colored these ones with the stamp and write pens. And you can tell immediately because they didn't bleed through the back. Um, the Stampin' Blends pens do bleed through, so if you use Stampin' Blends, don't do it on your final project. Do it on something that you're going to stick down because it'll bleed through. Um, the colors I used uh, for this was the Real Red and the Petal Pink, um, which matches along with the Stampin' Blends I did on my um, Ladybird on the front of it. Okay, so that's the inside, and I think the red will contrast quite nicely on the green. And just simply, you could use tear and tape to stick down the inside, but for purposes, quick video purposes, I'm doing it this way. Make sure you put it the right way up, and so then we just have that little line around the edge. You can decorate the inside with whatever you'd like, but I just kind of like the contrast of the red on the green on the inside. Yep. Okay, so that is actually the spinner card done. And so you can see the nice shine of the flowers. You could color those in a bit, but I think um, with the colors I did my main flower, it kind of just um, goes along with it because it's gold and silver, but in some light it almost looks champagne-like. So. You can just get your butterfly to spin. Sometimes it sticks in certain areas. If you're having trouble with it, just pull up gently on the edges here because it might be that those edges have been pushed down too much and that's why it won't spin. So there's the little ladybug. And this is the bee. So this is the one I did not use the um, metal with the um, uh, penny with it. Now, um, if you are somewhere that doesn't have small um, coins or cheap coins, because like a 10 cent coin would make that quite expensive, um, you could even put a metal washer there. I've done that before, but it turns out the hole in the metal washer um, is right where you want the adhesive to stick, and it, you can't get the adhesive to stick down for that. And so again, I'll just show you the inside of this one that says, thinking of you, sweet friend, with a little B. And I might pop this into a friend's mailbox um, without getting anywhere near them and not telling them. And then maybe one day they will, um, when they check, they can find a lovely little message that I'm thinking of them, even though I can't get near them at this time. So I hope you um, are staying safe and healthy wherever you are at the moment. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. This one here, um, you can still get everything for that in the mini catalog. The honeybee is well as the detailed bead dies. Um, the paper is only available for free until March 31st. This one here um, is only a host free gift, um, the little ladybug, but you can do this with any um, stamps you have that you want to spin around. Um, this set here actually has dies that can cut the small ladybug as, uh, bee as well, and I had thought about using that, um, but I decided not. I wanted to go with the bigger one. So those are the two stamp sets. Um, I used the lovely Stampin' Blends to color everything. These are the colors I used for the ladybug, same as the inside. 
Uh, if you're not familiar with the Stampin' Blends, there's this color lifter pen, and you can use that if you have little oopsie moments, and it helps to reduce the color. Um, it just kind of fades it out. But simply coloring over with another um, pen color is pretty much all you really need to do um, to change the colors on them. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see some more videos. I am planning to do a video every day um, during my hibernation and um, do a blog post um, as well. So uh, check out my blog, which is papercraftaddictionblogspot.co.nz. Um, look for me on Facebook at CNC Designs. I've also got my website. So if you are in New Zealand and you want to purchase any products and you don't already have a, a uh, Stampin' Up! demonstrator, please contact me. Um, Stampin' Up! is still shipping things. It can be shipped directly to your home. Uh, but contact me and I'll give you a special host code to use with your order and then um, I will send you out a free gift for that. And so stay safe and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.